ce soir. My name is Kina Leclerc and I will be your moderator. Je m'appelle Kina Leclerc et je serai l'animatrice de ce point de presse. Before we begin, a quick reminder to place yourself on mute until I invite you to speak or to ask your question. Available for questions from the media, we have Disponible pour répondre aux questions des médias, nous accueillons In Council Chambers, Mayor, Le Maire, Jim Watson Steve Canalacos, City Manager, Directeur Municipal Phoning in today, we have Steve Bell, Deputy Chief, Chef Adjoint Kim Ayotte, General Manager, Emergency and Protective Services Directeur Général, Service de Protection et d'Urgence David White, City Solicitor, Chef du Contentieux Wendy Stephenson, Chief Financial Officer, Chef des Finances. Rick O'Connor, City Clerk, Greffier Municipal. And Donna Gray, General Manager, Community and Social Services. Directrice Générale, Services Sociaux et Communautaires. I will now invite each agency to ask their question. You may ask one question with one follow-up. Par ordre alphabétique, j'invite maintenant chaque organisme à poser une question. By alphabetical order, we can start. Hey there, thanks so much for sticking around to take our questions so late in the evening. Uh, my first question I think is for Steve Bell and uh, Mr. White about this injunction uh, that was granted by uh, the Ontario court. Obviously you have asked the truckers politely to stop unlawfully honking their horns before. Is this injun injunction actually a helpful tool for you? Can we actually expect some sort of change from an, enforce an enforcement perspective in the coming days? Yes, thanks for your uh, question, Laura. So, um, the, as you know, the injunction is is very new to us. Uh, we're still continuing to go through and assess it with our attorneys. Any tool that we can have that will will help provide us additional tools to enforce bylaws, HTA laws, criminal laws, um, what have you, is going to be important for us to use and leverage. We'll continue to assess our ability to enforce them at different points and at different times to, to make sure that we're having the most impact we can to stop the occupation. Thank you so much. Um, and my second question is about this um, arson investigation on Lisgar Street. Um, Mayor, you obviously made some comments at the beginning of this very long council meeting um, regarding what this tells us about the intentions of the protesters. Um, is there anything that leads you to believe that this is directly connected to the protest? Sorry, Laura, is that question for me? Uh, for you and I think for Mr. Bell, if he has any details on the investigation. Yeah, obviously I, I can't comment on the investigation. I can only uh, say that it's, uh, in my opinion, highly likely that it's, it's from the, uh, the protest march because uh, we're seeing a lot of uh, illegal and criminal activity along the street, rude behavior, uh, and the very fact that uh, two people go in, try to start a fire and uh, wrap up the door so it would be very difficult for people to get out, that could have cost several lives uh, and uh, thank goodness um, no lives were lost, but the fear factor uh, in that neighborhood uh, is through the roof. and. Uh, I, I suspect, uh, you know, the caravan is attracting and acting as a magnet to bring a lot of people who have a lot of, um, um, <clears throat> who are causing a lot of grief to our neighborhoods and our, our, our uh, communities. And uh, I, you know, again, I don't know if they were directly connected, but uh, that uh, caravan attracts a lot of uh, nasty people. Steve? Bell? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so I'm going to absolutely concur with the comments of the mayor. Um, we've been actively working on this investigation all day. You've seen earlier in the day we've posted photos looking for the community's assistance, the public's assistance in identifying the people involved in this. Uh, it, we can't, as the investigation unfolds, we'll be able to better determine whether uh, it's directly related to the occupation or not. That being said, we know there's extreme fear in, in these neighborhoods. There's a heightened sense of lack of security there. And that's something that, as the police service, we've really been focusing on, redeploying resources to make sure that we have a larger presence of foot officers in the area to have zero tolerance and enforce all the laws in that area. Uh, we will continue to continue with the investigation and update as we move ahead on it. 
Thanks so much. Thank you very much, Laura. Up next, we have Joanne Chianello at CBC. Hi, thanks. Um, I don't go first now, so maybe the mayor won't uh, compare me to the 89-year-old uh, Washington correspondent that always goes first, too. Um, Laura Sorry did about that. <laughs> it's okay. I took it as a compliment, but um, I'm going to piggyback a bit on Laura's uh, uh, question about the injunction. I think a lot of people are wondering, why was this needed when we have a noise bylaw, you know, and, uh, and what can it bring uh, that we didn't have before? You know, if someone can maybe talk a little bit about that, I don't know if it's uh, uh, David White, uh, Deputy Bell, and whoever else would like to add into that. Uh, so I can start with it. And like I said before, any tool that we can have that will, will help us in our enforcement efforts is something that we would welcome. You are right. There is existing HTA laws for excessive noise, bylaws for excessive noise, bylaws for idling that already exist. We're currently reviewing the, um, the, all the components within the injunction to look at how it will augment our tools that we have in order to work to stop this occupation. No one else? David, you don't have anything to say on that? Good? Um, no, I just, I, I, again, the, the city wasn't a party to this and, and the enforcement is, is ultimately up to the courts and to the police. Um, so I, again, I uh, defer to the deputy. Sure. Um, and I guess I'm not even sure how to ask this because it seems kind of ridiculous. But I mean, the protesters have demanded that someone from the city meet with them on Wellington. I do not expect that you did that. But I am wondering, did anybody actually receive a request at the city? Um, how are you communicating? And of course, I know there'll be confidential information you can't share. But how are you communicating with these folks? Did you actually receive a uh, request to meet or is this propaganda that's online? I can say from my perspective, Joanne, that my office has not received any uh, invitation. Um, I don't know. I think the police have some contacts with uh, some of the protest organizers. Deputy? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. So, uh, Joanne, what I can tell you is from the beginning of the protest, like in any uh, protest or demonstration that we engage in, we have officers that are on our police liaison team that are directly dedicated to open channels of communication, to have discussions with the people who are organizing the protest or demonstration so that we can actually look at how we can peacefully resolve, uh, resolve the situation. We, we've continued to engage in that dialogue through this demonstration, this occupation, and we will continue that as we move ahead. Um, those those members have have seen some success. Um, they were able to successfully uh, negotiate the members of that were in occupying Confederation Park to leave over the weekend. So we will continue to keep those lines of communication open in in the hope and attempts to make sure that we can peacefully end this demonstration. And is, you you can you confirm or not? Uh, can you confirm at all if if you did receive a an actual invitation to meet on Wellington Street? So I I actually can't confirm that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Moving on, we will go to Ted Raymond at CTV Ottawa. Uh, hi there. Uh, thanks for taking our questions. Uh, my first uh, question, I guess, is to uh, Mayor Watson. Uh, uh, the Prime Minister is up in the House of Commons uh, just a little while ago uh, speaking to this. He says uh, that it has to stop, uh, that uh, you know they're barricading our economy and harassing people in the streets. Um, but I'm wondering if, in your opinion, um, have you been in contact uh, regularly over these last 10, 11 days with the PMO um, just regarding Justin Trudeau's response or role in this, and do you think that the Prime Minister should be more involved in trying to bring this to an end? Yes, uh, excuse me, uh, Ted, I spoke to the Prime Minister, uh, I'm trying to recall, um, several days ago. Uh, I had uh, conversations uh, today, this afternoon, uh, with uh, two ministers, the Minister of Emergency Preparedness, the Minister of Public Safety, um, discussions with um, with the premier as well, and um, and other elected officials uh, from both borders, uh, from both uh, the province and the federal government, 
Uh, the Prime Minister, I know, is uh, obviously uh, deeply involved in, in all of the discussions, and um, I know I'll be speaking with him, I believe, sometime uh, this week to give him an update from the municipal perspective. As you know, we wrote to the Prime Minister today and, and requested a significant increase in the number of uh, RCMP officers that we need uh, here in uh, the City of Ottawa because uh, we clearly uh, need to better protect the residential neighbourhoods and uh, start to um, gain ground as we did just a few days ago at the, the baseball stadium in Confederation Park. So I know the Prime Minister and his staff are, are um, actively engaged as their number one file and number one priority. And uh, we started the discussions uh, today with his ministers uh, so that hopefully sometime in the next day or two we can have a tripartite uh, meeting with the province, uh, the federal government and ourselves at the municipality to uh, plan our way forward uh, to end this occupation and to give greater comfort and security to those people who feel threatened and harassed uh, in our neighborhoods. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, my second question is to uh, Deputy Chief Bell, uh, just regarding um, something that uh, Chief Soley has said about uh, the protesters, they're kind of adapting to enforcement measures, they're changing their tactics uh, every time police step up enforcement, for example, today with the jerry cans, they're filling them with water uh, to try to, I guess, sneak things past or, or whatever it is that they're doing. Um, can you talk a little bit about, is there a way that, that police are able to kind of stay on top of this, or is this just going to be one long cat and mouse game between these two, between you and, and, the, and the protesters until they do eventually leave? Uh, yeah, thanks for the question, Ted. Um, so, yeah, the, the chief did... Um, actually make the, the statements and give examples of, of the challenges our officers are seeing out there on a daily basis. Um, I, I think it's really important to recognize the amazing work that the men and women of our police services and other police services, the RCMP, the OPP, and other Ontario Municipal Police Services are engaged in. They're up against some really challenging situations on a regular basis. Today is a great example. We have the example you're talking about around interdiction of gasoline and diesel coming into the site. I can tell you that during one of those interdictions today, uh, one of our officers was swarmed by a group of people to the point that we needed to call in a public order unit team to actually allow him to get out of the crowd. Uh, following that, I can tell you there, an investigation is ongoing. There was an arrest made and there will be charges coming from that. Um, another one of our officers was involved in a minor collision where a vehicle rammed them at a checkpoint. Again, an investigation is going on and we continue to follow up in, in looking for charges. We're also, um, you heard us talk today about the, uh, the investigations going into the threats against uh, public figures and members of this police service. Today, we responded to two swatting incidents, one of them originating from the United States that's resulted in charges. Our members, our city, our members and everyone involved in this are, un, are under unprecedented stress and pressure and our members are doing absolutely the best job they can to resolve this in every way. Thank you very much. So moving on, we will go to, on, allait, on va passer à Julien Paquette à Le Droit. Bonsoir, bonsoir. Uh... Good evening. Some investigation. Uh, one detail I was just curious about, and I can't seem to, to, to find this information anywhere, but uh, do you have any date, details to share about how what exactly happened to, to, to that fortunately this, this fire that they tried to start uh, didn't, well, didn't spread basically during uh, uh, this incident? Do you know what would happen to, to prevent this or? Um, so thanks, Julian. Um, as we indicated, uh, we've been on this since early in the day, since it's been reported. It's a very serious incident. There's, there's absolutely no doubt and something we're taking extremely seriously and putting lots of resources uh, behind to try and resolve and solve and have charges as quickly as possible. Our arson investigators are doing the investigation and as part of that, they will work with the fire department to look at what damage was caused or what damage could have been caused. 
I can't comment on why the fire didn't spread. I can tell you that I am very happy and relieved that it did not spread as the intention was to, to cause grave injury to people. Uh, but our investigation will ultimately reveal that. Okay. And uh, my follow-up will be for you as well. Uh, so it's uh, concerning the uh, 1,800 uh, people you, you requ you're requesting from uh, uh, from the RCMP and the OPP. Um, the chief has mentioned that this uh, this additional these additional resources will be important to uh, to achieve your strategy uh, in the in, in in the upcoming days. Uh, can just Give us a little more details about what these these additional re, uh, human resources will be useful for. What what, uh, what type of actions will you be able to take when once you get these uh, uh, these other officers and and civil employees? So um, it's it's really important that that you understand the scope and scale of of our policing operation. Now it takes over. 400 officers, excuse me, it takes over 400 officers a day to staff the checkpoints and the crowd control um, operations that we have ongoing. That takes away from our daily operations of running a police service across the largest municipality in Canada. Um, we are looking for these members to come in, augment our current staff to allow us to resume some of the work that's been put aside from our regular policing operations um, while we increase our presence in that area, while we increase our efforts around negotiation and increase our efforts around enforcement to cut off absolutely the supplies going in there to continue to have remove uh, people and activities from places like uh, Coventry uh, Road sites. So those resources will be applied to maintaining our current operations and expanding them to ultimately have an end to the occupation. Merci beaucoup, Julien. Thank you, Deputy Chief Bell. Nous allons maintenant passer. We will now go to John Willing at the Ottawa Citizen. Thanks, Kina. A uh, question for city management. Who has the standing offer for towing illegally parked vehicles right now and who is uh, refusing work under the standing order because of the protest and finally is this company or companies providing services outside of the protest area uh, for example the suburbs or you know are, are companies refusing to do work inside the red zone only hi john um the uh, i don't have the list of companies we have a standing offer with uh, many of the tow truck uh, operators in Ottawa, and I don't have a list in front of me to give you that, but I can certainly follow up and get you a list. Um, we've contacted them all, and uh, everyone is, they're all refusing, uh, as of today, to provide uh, heavy tow truck work. They're still doing light uh, tow work, obviously, towing cars and all those things, uh, but uh, right now we're reviewing their contracts, their standing offer, and um, reviewing what uh, actions we can take um, to um, deal with this uh, unprecedented situation. We're also uh, calling tow truck companies um, in Eastern Ontario. We're now contacting other large municipalities. The mayor has reached out to uh, several mayors of uh, larger cities in Ontario, uh, Toronto, uh, Brampton and others to see if we can get uh, help from there. Um, and right now the consensus seems to be um, that many of them or most of them uh, don't want to do the work because um, especially the heavy tow truck work because they rely on um, on the um, the um, uh, heavy truck industry for their livelihood and uh, they don't want to damage that part of their business that's the position they're taking at least at least to us um, but we are uh, pursuing that uh, we've talked with the uh, province and the feds uh, federal government uh, at the official level and uh, we're all looking at the problem we have quite frankly, across Canada, across Ontario and across Canada with respect to tow truck operators um, refusing um, to participate in the towing of these uh, these protesters. Okay, thank you. Uh, and then maybe this is a question for Deputy Bell. And then knowing, hearing that, Deputy, uh, how do you get the rigs out of there if they won't be uh, operated out of there? I, I think Chief slowly alludes to this in some of his answers about use, trying to find some alternative solutions what solutions are on the table right now if you can't get a tow out of there? 
Yes, uh, great question. Thank you. Um, the, the tow challenge has been a challenge in every jurisdiction that's that's faced this, um, and it's it's forcing us to come up with some creative solutions. We have a, a, a host of different options that we're currently look at. Can't because of operational concerns. I don't want to share those right now, but we are actually we are coming towards a position where we're not going to let the tow truck operators and the ability to tow ve those vehicles out of there be an obstacle to ending what's occurring. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Nous allons maintenant passer à Emmanuel Poisson à Radio Canada. Emmanuel Poisson, Radio Canada. Hi everyone, bonjour. Uh, ma première question, si My on... first question, if you could answer it in French and in English, actually in French first, to follow up on a question of my colleague, with uh, several uh, trucks being illegal at park in the streets, it's, it's still going on despite the injunction and despite the efforts of police officers to give them tickets, if the Towing companies don't want to provide the service. What can the city do, the police service of Ottawa, to move these trucks away, especially since the towing company don't want to do the work? Thank you for the question. There are challenges uh, with these uh, trucks, but uh, for now, uh, the police, like Steve Bell said, will not let them affect them. They, they are reviewing several other options, but they can't explain them now because those are tactics and uh, they don't want to uh, sh show what they're planning now. So you're confirming that there's no uh, towing uh, company that want to take part in this effort. In Ottawa, we contacted all companies and none of them are interested because they're afraid they're going to lose the business uh, because a lot of their business come from heavy trucks. So they said they're not interested in uh, doing the work that we need. We're also contacting other uh, major municipalities such as Toronto and others to see if they have uh, those kind of tow trucks. And we're still looking for other tow trucks throughout the province to see if uh, someone could help us. But they're still really all holding the same position. And now I have a question for Mayor Watson. Mr. Mayor, you said this morning on Ottawa Morning that you launched the idea of a special mediator. Did you make the request? Uh, do you have any news of what's happening with this? Thanks for the question. Yes, I talked with the uh, minister and deputy minister, and I suggested that as an option to put an end to this uh, demonstration. So it's now up to the uh, federal elected reps to, uh, to, to do something. We will be discussing this uh, probably tomorrow, not just the issue of a mediator, but also our request uh, for additional police officers with the province and the federal government. Uh, we'll be discussing at the table together to discuss the future steps, but that's an option. Uh, they haven't said yes or no uh, for now, but they said that they will be reviewing it. Yeah, not a negotiator, Joanne, uh, uh, someone to go in to uh, mediate or right. help to right. facilitate. Uh, I brought the, the suggestion up to um, a number of uh, federal ministers and members of parliament. Uh, they said they would look at that as a possible option. Uh, they didn't say yes, they didn't say no, but I thought it may help to break the log jam if we could get uh, someone um, who, whose uh, reputation is uh, well regarded um, from all points of view in the country uh, to sit down uh, and see if we cannot find a amicable solution to this. Um, 
I'm not suggesting for a moment that the government bend on its uh, mandates to deal with their fight against COVID-19. That has to be paramount. But, um, you know, we may be able to find uh, some common ground on some aspects that at least uh, the, the truckers would get a hearing. But uh, their behavior to this point uh, has to improve dramatically. And I would only uh, suggest or support um, any kind of a mediator or a facilitator uh, if first and foremost, uh, all of the co convoys leave the downtown core and stop breaking the law. Otherwise, uh, I, I wouldn't uh, uh, be suggesting that. And I'm sorry, did you say in French that you're having a meeting tomorrow? Uh, we hope to have a meeting with the provincial and federal officials and the municipalities on the tripartite table. Um, we're not sure if it's confirmed tomorrow or the next day, but certainly within the next uh, two days uh, to get, get us all around the same table to discuss our uh, letter that we sent to the Premier and the Prime Minister with respect to uh, the additional 1,800 uh, uh, human resources, uh, police officers and inspectors that we need to help bring this situation under control. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. Nous allons maintenant passer à Marie-Christine Villeneuve à TVA. Marie-Christine Villeneuve from TVA. Marie-Christine, are you there? Olivier, from TVA Nouvelle. Fine. Yes, hi. Um, just picking up on a line of questioning from earlier. Um, Mayor Watson, one, a representative for the Freedom Convoy at, at a... At an oh, event. we hear you very well. Uh, Mayor, can you hear Paul? Uh, no, I, I can't. It's uh, muffled. Okay. Um, let me try something else here. Sorry. Sorry, we can't hear. Is there a, a better microphone you can use? Is this better? Is this better? Uh, no, it's more muffled. Okay. Um, I'll skip. Thank this you. is better. This is actually better. If you can talk oh. a little bit louder. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Okay. Okay. Mayor, earlier a representative for the Freedom Convoy organization said that they wanted to, they said that uh, this would not be resolved through political enforcement, but via political dialogue. Uh, and they wanted to sit down and talk to the city about de-escalating the police enforcement um, of the protest in order to find a solution. Is that something you would be agreeable to? Uh, well, as I mentioned earlier, we have not received any um, formal or informal request uh, through my office. I just confirmed that with my chief of staff. Um, I'd have to think long and hard about sitting down with them because the behavior that they have uh, shown towards our citizens uh, does not uh, merit uh, that kind of a dialogue. Uh, if they're willing to move their vehicles uh, and stop the, the nonstop honking of horns, then of course I'd be happy to sit down. But at the end of the day, um, I have no jurisdiction over federal and provincial mandates, and um, I think they, they should understand that. But um, you know, I think it's important for them to show good faith they want to have a meeting with uh, whoever, myself included, uh, they should be uh, clearing out and then come back peacefully and I'd be happy to meet with them. But I'm not going to go and uh, reward bad behavior until they uh, smarten up and, and get all of their trucks out of our downtown core. Thank you. I don't have a follow-up. I'm good. Thank you very much, Paul. This concludes our media availability for tonight. Uh, ceci conclut notre point de presse pour aujourd'hui. Merci. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, for your time.